Hey everyone, so I had a client come in the other day and I wanted to share what happened because it was pretty interesting. It wasn't terribly unique. This is something that happens fairly often, but um, I thought it might uh, I thought it might help a few people out, so I thought I'd share it here. And what it was I had one of my elite collegiate mountain bikers come in and we actually were testing a couple of different things. We were testing uh, his the difference in the way he sits on and rides his bike when he's on his hardtail versus his full suspension bike and we also were testing uh, what the, what the different cadences what that he spent spends his time at what these different cadences did to his mechanics and to his stability on the bike and so this is a little bit different but what I did is I have I have these two four columns here and these two columns on the right are him pedaling this is the right side of his body and this is him pedaling at his more standard cadence of about 85 rpms and then on the left here is a little bit higher cadence that he he ticked up to just to test out this is at 95 on the, these two left hand columns and the first thing that we noticed was that he was actually really stable in his mechanics between the two things if we just look at some of the some of the big ones here like first his knee extension stayed you know relatively the same i mean he really had good uh, motion through both sides that way his hip range of motion how much his hip opens and closes did change a little bit but it had mostly to do with a small change in his ankle posture and this actually I think for you know a lower cadence this is actually I think I would think is acceptable because a lot of the other things like here um, we have some indications with where his hips are relative to his feet that he's also pretty even between the two capture periods between low and higher cadence and we can double check that and sure enough, he's pretty stable down here. You can see 670, roughly 665, 670 um, for both sides from the hip to the wrist. The great thing is, is he's, like I said, he stays pretty stable, but things tend to clean up a little bit when he goes to his more comfortable cadence. His hip vertical motion drops just a little bit. And the most prevalent thing was with his saddle pressure, which we're seeing here. So on the left, obviously higher, uh, cadence on the right lower and now notice a couple of things first of all look at the red line now this is sort of the approximation of how the pelvis is moving and look at how centered it is where at the higher cadence he's kind of drifting off to the right hand side of the bike you can also notice pretty distinctly that there is less pressure on the on the lower cadence version this makes sense because he's lower cadence it's going to be higher torque so he's going to be unweighting himself from the saddle a little bit more but what i really like about this if we look at this the the higher uh, cadence he's got uh, these, these black squiggly lines that's that also is an indication of his pelvic po uh, motion and it's you can see it's it's just a bit more erratic it's he's having a tough time finding a stable uh, position on there whereas on the right side yes he's moving at a little bit of an angle but thing, the movement is pretty uniform here he kind of has this you know sideways figure eight sort of motion going just a little bit and definitely more uniform uh, more controlled and a much more stable pelvis and this is important because when he is kind of at his comfortable cadence here, his slightly lower cadence, uh, he's going to have a better uh, position on his seat, which is just going to help him generate power during the races. And lastly, this should just be a good cautionary tale for everybody out there that when you go above or even just slightly above your standard uh, or more, most efficient cadence, a lot of things are going to happen. One of them that could happen is that you could lose some pelvic stability. You lose that stability on the seat. And again, this could mean less power that you're generating in an efficient way. So if you're struggling on the bike, maybe you're just having a difficult time feeling like you're uh, connected to it or generating power well with it. You might look at your cadence. Additionally, if you feel like your saddle discomfort has changed um, or perhaps even you know the, the, the amount of pressure on your hands, Cadence might be something that you look at and you test and see what happens when you either lower the cadence a little bit, maybe raise it a few RPMs and get an idea for where you feel the most comfortable and then also judge what that cadence makes you feel like on the bike. So that's all for this one. Thanks everybody. I will see you on the next video.